Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to our channel here at CodeCloud. Today, we are taking a quick journey through the AWS highlights of new releases and significant changes that happened in September of 2023. From the evolution of EBS, which is the Elastic Block Store, the virtual hard drive, over the last 15 years, to the retirement of EC2 Classic after 17 years, we've also got some exciting updates on tools like CloudWatch, CloudFormation, AppRunner, we touch on some advancements with Amazon EMR and EKS and the enhanced data protection features of Amazon SNS that have just been announced. Stay tuned as we unpack these updates and more. So hit and subscribe. We're going to dive in. Let's roll over here. All right, here we are, September 2023, keeping up with AWS. Let's get in this thing. Okay. So two of these articles are actually not going to be the hands-on DevOps articles that we typically focus on with AWS. They're more about the scale and size and information about AWS. So first one is that the scale of EBS after 15 years as basically AWS's only virtual hard drive service. Dr. Uh, Warner Vogel, who's the CTO of Amazon, writes about the scale and complexity and changes to the Elastic Block Store over the years, as it evolved, as SSDs became more available, all the changes there. So this is worth our read just to understand some basic concepts about the scale that you could run into and what you could deal with. So here's some detail around the Amazon Elastic Block Store of 15 years. First of all, just know that this write-up, again, is different from what we usually talk about. But the idea here is for you to see exactly the size of operations that they're doing for customers every single day. Are you going to run into this into your own job? Maybe not. But it's to get you thinking in large scale. That's why we're always, what is this? How do we scale? How do we adapt? How far can we take this? For most of us, we're dealing with small to medium sized problems. But imagine dealing with 1.75 million databases just in Virginia alone. The second thing with keeping up with AWS this, this month is that EC2 Classic which was a classic old way of deploying EC2 virtual machines outside of a VPC, outside of a virtual private cloud. It was around for a long time. So when EC2 was first launched in 2006, you didn't have VPCs. As a matter of fact, we didn't have IAM. I know that sounds unbelievable to not have some kind of authentication mechanism, which we did with the operating system but you didn't really have any kind of AWS native way of authorizing access. And it was also stuck outside of a VPC. EC2 Classic, which has been around 2023, so you do the math, 17 years, was retired basically. And no more having to deal with the old way of doing things. Some things like classic load balancers are also going away at the same time. And so EC2 Classic, we're now doing the VPC thing for our virtual machines or even better, we're using Fargate or we're using serverless to do our stuff. Number three, Amazon CloudWatch basically now supports regular expression filtering. Now, if you have been in this industry for any length of time, you know that regular expressions are both the boon and the bane of your existence because they can do powerfully incredible things if you can actually get them to do those things if you understand what regular expressions are like. So this is a fundamental of programming, kind of part of Perl, part of shell scripting. But basically it allows you to apply two regular expression filters for every log stream. So you can like filter out content or redirect content based on what the filter says. This is very useful. Number four, using AWS CloudFormation and CDK for multi-cloud deployments. This post is a little bit of an action post. It actually comes from the DevOps blog for AWS. It's going to show you how to use the CDK, the Cloud Development Kit, to create a single pane of glass for managing all of your multi-cloud resources. The CDK, people think it's AWS only. It's actually an open source framework that builds on the underlying uh, AWS CloudFormation capability, but this shows you how to run multi-cloud with using the CDK. I'll let you kick the tires on that. I don't think it goes into Azure and into Google, but it gives you an idea of how that could be approached. Okay, number five. Deploy and scale with AWS AppRunner. So this post actually shows you how to use a Django web app on AppRunner and how to securely throw in things like, for example, an RDS relational database. So this post is going to allow you to use AppRunner if you've never touched it before, which is great because we're going to talk in about a minute and prove in an AppRunner that will make more sense if you've actually used AppRunner for something. So number five, 
is going to teach you how to use App Runner to deploy a Django app. Number six, Amazon EMR on EKS. So this is a, the Elastic MapReduce service on top of the Elastic Kubernetes service. And what this does is this is in preview, so it's not general availability, but you can now run Apache Flink on top of your existing EKS cluster, which will give you better resource utilization and management by using Flink. We haven't touched it before, take a look at it. It's worth exploring. Number seven, and I hinted to this just a minute ago, App Runner has launched improvements for auto scaling that previously you couldn't touch. So App Runner is a really simple way to just deploy applications. You give it code or an image, a few parameters, and it just goes and does it. And now you actually have the ability to modify your auto scaling group behavior to touch the different parameters that you can do for any other service. So things like step scaling, dynamic scaling, predictive scaling, that kind of thing. You now actually have some control over that. Last but not least, and arguably really awesome, especially for a managed service, Amazon Simple Notification Service now has redaction and deletion, like obfuscation basically, of personally identifiable information or personal health information. So you can actually set up rules for what kind of information you will allow through your SNS service. And if it violates one of the, those rules, it'll get redacted. If someone shares like credit card, social security number information, personal health information, you can redact it all inside of SNS. It acts as another gate to make sure that PII doesn't get out through your environment through a service that's typically low touch, but now you've got this added capability for it. That's the Keeping Up with AWS updates for September of 2023. My name is Michael Forrester, once again with CoCloud. Great for you to be here. If you like getting these updates or you want more, leave us some comments. Let us know what you'd like to see more of. Otherwise, we will catch you next month when we talk about October's Keeping Up with AWS.